All right, so let's do a problem with definite integrals. Okay, so quick recap, and if you haven't seen my video on definite versus indefinite integrals and you're unsure about that, go ahead and check that out. But when we're looking for a definite integral, we'll do a quick little aside here, we're looking for some integral over a interval, a to b, with a function inside dx, and we want to get a value of area for a to b, the area underneath that curve, or above that curve to the x-axis. So that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at a definite integral, so we don't want an equation, we want a value. So, what are our steps, what do we need to do? Well, look up here in the right-hand corner. The steps to taking definite integral. First here, we need to find the indefinite integral, so we need to get the function that this is going to provide us with, or basically all this is saying is we need to get the antiderivative of x times 2 plus x squared. And then, <coughs> sorry, we're going to substitute the values uh, that we have up here in our interval. So we're going to get that function, then we're going to plug in 1, we're going to plug in 2, and then we're going to do the third step. We're going to set those, uh, not set these things equal, my goodness. We're going to subtract them to solve. We're going to subtract upper bound uh, from the lower bound uh, to solve these. Okay, cool. All right, so let's get started. First off, antiderivative. So now, I know you're thinking, oh man, well, let's just let's go ahead and call this u right here, and then we can have x u. No, let's not do a u substitution. It looks like it's a good idea because we have this here, but look how easy it is to just distribute this x and then just treat it like a polynomial. So let's do that instead of doing a u sub. So instead of that, uh, let's just go ahead and, and distribute this like we said. So 2 times x is uh, 2x plus x times x squared. This is just x cubed. Now, don't make the mistake and just say, okay, got my answer derivative. No, we, we, all we've done is we have, uh, we've combined this into one thing. Now, we need to take the antiderivative derivative of this because this is equal to this. We're still, this is still within the integral. So, what is the antiderivative of 2x? Well, if we take x squared and we take the prime of that, that's just 2x. So, x squared is going to be our antiderivative. So, go ahead and say, x squared, and then plus the der antiderivative of x over 3. Now, to get that, we're going to use this, this neat little rule here. It says the indefinite integral of x to the nth power dx is equal to x to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1. So, in this case, uh, with x to the third, our n is equal to 3. So, we're going to have x to the n plus 1. So, all right x to the n plus 1, x, 3 plus 1 is 4, x to the 4th, and that's going to be over 4, n plus 1. So, we've got that. Get rid of this here. Alright, so now we've got this, and this is our antiderivative. We don't need to do any more work there. So now we've got that. Now we're going to head and do our substitution. So, let's do that. All right, so we're going to substitute our upper bound, then we're going to substitute our lower bound, and then we're going to just subtract these things to get our area. So our upper bound here is 2, so where we see an x, we're going to put a 2. I'm doing these parentheses just not to save time, but to prevent mistakes here. So we'll go ahead and put our 2's in here. And what does this equal? Well, 2 squared, this is just 4, right? And then 2 to the 4th is just 16, so we have, oh, no, two. We have 4 plus... 16 over 4. Well, 16 over 4 is 16 divided by 4, so this is just equal to 4. So we have 4 plus 4, or 8. So our upper bound value here is going to be 8. So we've got that in our arsenal. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our lower bound. So, hey, look, let's just erase these and put in the new values, right? Makes sense, save ourselves some time. All right, cool, let's do our next values here. So our lower bound is one, so we'll just put one in here, we'll just put one in here. Well, one squared, of course, is just one, and one to the fourth is just one. So this is one plus one over four. One, one, uh, one and a quarter, right? Uh, or just 1.25. 
this is going to be an easier way to think about it when we subtract this. So now we've got 1.25 as the value for our lower bound. And let's go ahead and do our next step, which is to take our upper bound and sub the value that we got from our upper bound and subtract it from our substitutionary value from the lower bound. So we're going to have 8 minus 1.25 which is just 6.75. So, now that we have this, we know that this is our final answer here. 6.75, what does that mean again? Well, remember since we're taking a uh, definite integral, we're looking for a value of area. So, all of this here is equal to 6.75, which just means that the graph of this, whatever it looks like, between the point 1 and 2 has 6.75 units of area in there, square. We're done. That's it.